Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Christ is born. He's born in me. Hallelujah. Ah, very good. See, that's usually an Easter thing. You know, I got the, the transition there. Okay. See, he is born indeed. And that's uh, what we're here to celebrate. I've celebrated now, uh, I guess, 46 Christmases. Um, maybe some of y'all, a little more, or maybe a lot more, or less. But nonetheless, each time it is a, it is a wonderful day to celebrate the birth of the Christ coming into this world to save us. But over the years, I've learned that really uh, Christmas is about one thing. It's all about the presents. When I was young, really young, just a wee little boy, about six, my parents divorced. It was a sad time, confusing time. I was angry. Divorce is always bad, right? No matter whose fault it is, no matter if you're getting divorced, to be protected from the other one or, or, or whatever. Even if it's biblical grounds for divorce, it's still bad. Why? Because it's, it's a broken relationship. You see, we do it amongst others, our friends, our other family members. When that relationship breaks, we're reminded of how, how sin has come into the world and affected everything, even our relationship with God. So as a young little boy, this was, this is a really confusing, this is really bad. This is like the first terrible thing to happen in my life. But, well, I soon kind of got over it because you see my parents they both remarried well other people and so when that happens guess what all of a sudden I have twice as many relatives that means extra sets of aunts and uncles and grandparents and cousins and you name it I had it it was great because then Christmas rolls around and what does that mean? A bunch of presents, right? A bunch. I mean, you know, and I'd have to, like, travel the Christmas circuit, basically. I, I don't know how many Christmas meals I had to eat. I mean, um, some of them, you know, twice in the same day. Uh, some of them just hours apart, but six or seven or maybe eight some years. Oh, my gosh. It was, it was a nice life. All the presents. I had more toys than, than probably anybody. You see, Christmas, it's all about the presents and the parties and the eating and the eggnog and maybe with the little extra nog and the eggnog. And the family traditions, we all have them, right? My family, they go to Keller's and then we wander around and look at Christmas lights. And it's only fun if uh, the driver gets lost and before we find the place we're looking for, you see. Uh, my dad used to honestly get lost, but now that Sherry drives, she has to accidentally get lost just to, just to make it part of the fun. But see, isn't that what Christmas is all about? The presents, the parties, the family traditions, and all of these things, the food. Well, if you weren't here last night, you're probably thinking, um, what is wrong with this pastor? I think I've come to the wrong church this Christmas morning. He can't be for real, can he? Well, you're right, you see. I've been preaching to you the wrong sermon. I preached the wrong sermon last night, too. You see, it's really not about any of those things. All of those things could go away, and well, in fact, they are. All those toys that I got, they're gone. They, they made it to the dumpster like, well, just about everything else we will get. We'll get the new I whatever or the new little thing that you talk to that does all kind of things for you. And eventually it'll wear out, break, get dropped, and into the dumpster it goes. But there's one thing that cannot be taken away, you see. I say it is all about the presence. It is all about the presence of Christ. As we're reminded with this candle we call the Christ candle, just to remind us that he is always with us. And this one back here, the eternity candle. And Christ came into the world, burst forth quite literally into this world of darkness, 
the light into the darkness, into the sin, into the chaos. No, he didn't have to. No, God didn't have to send him. And we ponder, well, why? Why would God do such a thing? Why would Jesus come into this? Well, to save you, to save sinners. Read some of those words in those carols we just sang. Just amazing how you, they can give you such a message in such a short amount of time. That's, that's why we still sing the hymns, because they're, they're great at that. Now, i got to pick on somebody who's not here this morning. Um, one of our Christmas traditions, after my grandfather died, well, we stopped going over to Nana and Papa's house, and Nana just come, started coming over to our house. Now, Nana, she would show up with bags, you know, bags, little gift bags and tissue paper coming out of, it looked like thousands of them, her whole trunk full of them. So she would come in with all of her bags, and boy, we would have the presents under the tree, but when she was done, it was a full spread. It would be like, you know, all these plants here, that, that much. And, and so we, it became kind of a joke because, but well, we'd open these things and we'd go, what is this? <laughs> we don't even know what this is. And, and so we go, um, and so in all the males, we get the same thing. You know, okay, no matter how old they were, and all the females, we get the same thing, no matter how, how old they were. And so Nana and her bags, and the things that we get, they would usually break like the first time we use them. And so we figured out that they're probably, you know, coming from, say, Dollar Tree. Now, there's some good deals at Dollar Tree, and there's some things that are worth less than a dollar. You know how that goes, okay? But, it, but it's like she had a compulsion to show us how much she loved us by bringing in all of these things. You see, she wanted us to have all of these gifts to open, to somehow show her, her, her love for us. And, well, after she died, my parents going through her finances discovered that she was broke. She was, in fact, in debt, okay? There was, there was nothing. She, she, had, she had no money, but yet, up until the very last Christmas, wanted, wanted to bring us all of these little things as if those things were very important, see? Just not important at all. I think sometimes we get caught up in what Nana was, was doing. You see, we say, well, uh, maybe if I can get the, the perfect gift for that person or enough gifts, and well, then maybe, okay, that will show my, my love for them. Or, um, and, and so the, the world just uh, presents this message to us. Have you been uh, li looking at the commercials? Have you, have you watched? Do you, do you pay attention to the, to the connections? It seems like love is in this uh, diamond necklace or uh, if you love your spouse, you know, buy them a, a new car or, or some such thing. The love and happiness wrapped up in this, in this gift. You watch the, the holiday movies? I don't call them Christmas movies because most of them aren't Christmas movies. They're, they're holiday movies because almost none of them talk about Luke 2. See, none of them hardly talk about the birth of Christ or even give any mention to the name Jesus. But if you watch and look carefully, you'll be convinced that Christmas is something else than the commercials and the TV specials and in the movies and all of these things. But see, all of that doesn't matter. Traditions, gifts, lots of gifts, expensive gifts, whatever, just doesn't matter because we've already been given the greatest gift. In Sunday school, Michael was telling us that we already have all we want. You see, Jesus has to be all that we would ever want. He comes because he loves us, because he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to restore the relationship broken between man and, and God. And he comes to do that on the cross, taking the sins of the world, all of them, everybody, yours, mine, and all those people out there, not in church this Christmas, not interested in being in church any Sunday, for them too, and, and, and wanting them just to repent. You see, when, when we get caught up in the, the, the stuff and all the trimmings, perhaps we too should come before God and repent. Lord. Oh, it's not about all of the traditions and the gifts. 
and, and this stuff. It's not about putting on a show of having lots of money when really I have none. You see, love is not communicated through, through stuff. It's communicated through relationship. And God wants that relationship with us through Jesus Christ. And so, yes, it's all about presence. It's all about the presence of Christ, Emmanuel, who is God with us, our Jesus, who promises to be with us to the very end of the age, no matter how bad it gets, no matter if you had a terrible night last night, no matter if this is the, the hardest Christmas ever because somebody is gone, you know, like Nana or whoever. No, he says, I am with you. He is Prince of Peace. He is offering you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Because he promises to bring you to God and, and promises you eternal life. He promises that he is coming again. And we look forward to that. It is all about the presence of Christ among us and us as members of his body. So perhaps as we're celebrating God's presence, we might respond like the shepherds, you see. The text tells us that when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. So we have these shepherds then returning and proclaiming this message. Shepherds weren't the type of people that were looked highly upon. They're kind of, uh, I don't know, dirty and untrustworthy kind of, a, kind of a group. But they went out proclaiming this message. Or perhaps we could deliver the message like the angels who are, well, the word angel means messenger. And they say, fear not, for behold, Behold, what I'm going to tell you next is really important. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Not just some of the people, but all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Our Savior, born this day. For us. So Mary delivers salvation. Mary delivers Jesus. The very name means he saves. He's a child born to die for sinners. You, me, and everybody else. All of us who are born sinful and continue to sin, and even perhaps to continue to drive wedges in between the relationships among us who continue to crave things, who get fixated on all the stuff that really has very little to do with today. Christmas. The celebration of Christ's birth. And he's delivered us just as Mary's delivered him. He's delivered us by his birth, his death, his resurrection at our baptism. Delivered through water all of us baptized. So perhaps whenever you unwrap your presence today or next year or whenever, pretend you're a shepherd. Remember that you have a great message to go forth and tell all people and to announce. You'll go back to work, maybe some of you tomorrow, I'm sorry, but maybe. But see, you have a great message. Tell them part of this story, how well, you've seen things and heard things. You're at church, and, and this guy, he told you about how Jesus died for all the people. Because there's some there who don't know, and they need to hear. And always remember, you are in the presence of God. He will never leave nor forsake you. He loves you. He continues to forgive you through the blood of his son shed there on that cross, continuing to love you and forgiving you as you come before him, confessing your sins. And so return to, well, wherever you've come from, perhaps family.
time visiting with family, perhaps out of state, but return there glorifying and praising God, making known all that you've heard today. For unto us a Savior is born. Amen. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be with your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.